Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged Plus. Now I'm joined today by Lucy Simpson, who is Head of EV Propositions at British Gas. And I'm gonna learn about how uh, they're helping customers and businesses to transition to electric vehicles and a net zero future. So welcome to the show, Lucy. Thank you for joining us today. So we know about British Gas being an energy supplier. So why are you here to talk about electric vehicles? Well, for a number of reasons. So most importantly, we're committed to helping the UK transition to net zero and road transport, as you know, is such a massive part of that. With 30% of all emissions coming from UK transport, it's really important that we really get on with this transition to EV. And of course, our engineers are trusted in customers' homes. In fact, we've been installing EV charge points for years, and we've done thousands in customers' homes, but also in workplaces, and also out in the public, you know, public charging arena. We've installed 350 kilowatt chargers as well. So we've got a lot of experience in installing EV chargers and then looking after them once they're installed. So it's a big part of what we do now. We work with a whole range of partners as well. So we work with a lot of the vehicle manufacturers. So when um, somebody's buying a car, we will then come in and install the charge point on their property. So we're working with Ford, Vauxhall, Honda, and a number of others to support all of those new vehicles coming into to, to British households. So we're sat next to this lovely, well, very, very clean electric van. I'm really impressed how shiny it is. But So how important is this to your, your fleet and engineers? Uh, hugely important. Our engineers absolutely love their electric vans. There's so many things they like about them. They talk about how comfortable they are to drive, quiet they are to drive, and just how reliable they are. So as soon as one of our engineers gets an electric van, they're very, very happy and, and obviously never want to switch back to a combustion engine. So that's really important. And also our customers are noticing and asking our engineers because most people out there are interested in electric vehicles and are thinking about when am I going to buy mine. The other hugely important thing is that we're the third largest fleet in the UK. So we have a huge responsibility to drive down you know, emissions out on road transport. Our electric fleet has done three and a half million miles already. And in fact, apparently, seven times to the moon and back in terms of distance and that's something we're really proud of. What's obviously really important is the amount of carbon we've saved. We've saved nearly 1,300 tonnes of CO2 by making that transition and so that is something that was obviously at the heart of why we're making this transition to EV. So obviously that carbon saving is one aspect of it but there's local area air pollution which I think people are getting more and more aware of that that's also a benefit. Our vans in particular, we drive them through very dense urban areas, so air quality is incredibly important where we're driving. And in fact, it's something that means a lot to me. I have a six-year-old boy, you know, take him to school. You can see the amount of cars on the road. You know that in cities, air quality isn't where it needs to be. So, you know, being able to drive electric vehicles and improving air quality is so important and really is at the heart of why we're making this transition as well as the carbon savings and driving to net zero. But what about uh, customers at home with, with private cars? So last year we launched Hive EV Charging. You can see here, this is our Hive EV Charge Point that we're installing at customers' homes. With that comes all of the technical know-how from our Hive teams. So we're able to um, integrate the charger with our back office software platform which actually most importantly means you can easily control the charger from your phone. So it's part of the existing Hive app and you can go in and you can schedule your charging to happen in tandem with your EV tariff. So if you've got a cheap night rate, you can schedule off the app for the, for the charger to come on during those hours of the night when your tariff is cheapest. And also, in fact, you know, when, when there's a lower carbon intensity on the grid as well. So there's a number of things you can do with the Hive EV charging app to be able to really drive down the cost of your charging and also just for general convenience as well. You can schedule that charging to happen overnight, but if for whatever reason you need to go out earlier on the day, you can just press actually override and it'll start charging immediately. It also has a number of really nice features to look at what charging you've been doing in the past. So you can look at your charging history in kilowatt hours. You can also look at your charging history, looking at the amount of money you've been spending as well. We're really proud of the Hive app and the, the EV charging um, solution that we've developed. And there's, there'll be more to come in terms of development within that Hive EV charging app as well. 
But I mean, that's a great advantage that uh, that that, that uh, charger. It doesn't matter what the car is; you can plug any car into it. And if you've got the control from that charger, that makes such a big difference. You know, you can schedule charging, as you say, and all those things are really, really useful. All of the intelligence sits in our back office platform, which then interfaces with the Hive app, um, and that gives you all of that control just from your phone. Now, what about all the drivers that uh, you know want to have an electric car or electric vehicle, and and but they haven't got a driveway, can't charge it at home? That's quite a big issue. It's been an immediate issue for us because our engineers take their vehicles home, and many of them can't charge at home. So what we've done is we've developed an electric charge card, which we're just in the process of rolling out to our to our fleet drivers, which basically means they can charge across all of our partner networks in a really seamless way. So that's something that um, we'll be looking to evolve and we're also looking at other solutions for domestic drivers like you and I that would charge at home who aren't part of a fleet. That's a big part of our development this year. So we'll be rolling out more products and, and solutions for that public charging support across this year. So Lucy, that's some really impressive achievements already that, and I can see you've got great things coming ahead, but what, what are you most looking forward to in, in 2022? There's so many exciting things going to happen in 2022. If you think about all of the new models that are going to come out from the car manufacturers, they're really going to start to address some of the key customer barriers that we've seen to that adoption. If you think about the range now that's going to come out from vehicles, the different form factors that are going to suit different families and different drivers, and really just expand the affordability out as well. I think it's really exciting that so many more people are going to be able to afford and want to drive EVs next year. The other thing for us is that the amount of support we're going to be doing to support all of that infrastructure that they're going to need to charge and all of the other services to make sure that the charge points are well looked after and that everybody gets a seamless experience with their charging. So I'm excited about the rollout of our um, electric charge cards. I'm excited about all those demand response propositions that we're working on that we're going to be rolling out next year as well. So I think there's going to be so much that's going on from a vehicle side and also from a charging infrastructure side. Um, this year, we're going to make a lot of difference towards that drive towards net zero. And I think the other thing for me is, you know, COP26 was last year, we made some really important commitments. And I think it's really important as an industry that we stay focused on those commitments that we made last year. Last year feels like a long time ago. COP feels like a long time ago. But actually, you know, we really need to stay focused on those commitments. So industry, companies like ours, working really closely with local authorities and with the government to drive that infrastructure that, and, and, you know, and services and support services that's needed for EV drivers across 22 and beyond is, is, is so important this year. Where, where can our audience go to find out more about what you're doing? So the best place to go is if you go online and look up Hive EV Charging, that's the best place to start. Thanks so much, Lucy. It's really good to talk to you about that. And, and good luck with all the, all the projects you've got coming up. It's really exciting. And that's all we've got time for for this particular episode of Fully Charged Plus. Please do subscribe to the series to make sure you don't miss any of our forthcoming amazing content. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.